Summoner's War Chronicles just released today, if everything's going as planned. Let's talk about your starter team. First of all, the Water Fairy is going to be reprising her role as your first three star in Summoner's War Chronicles. And a lot of her abilities are making a comeback, though admittedly they're a little bit tweaked for the new game. Her second skill is Purify. It heals the target and cleanses poison, if they have it. So it's a selective cleanse with a heal stapled onto it. At max skill level, it'll have a 24 second cooldown and cost four mana to use. Her third skill is Sleep Spell, and the sleep debuff itself lasts for seven seconds. Now, what I really like about Chronicles is that there's another clause stapled onto sleep, whereas before, if something was asleep, you hit it once it wakes up, that's no longer the case in Chronicles. Now, it'll last for a certain duration, in this case seven seconds, or until the target is hit five times. And that's actually really flexible. That means that even if you still plan on attacking the monster, it's still worth it to use sleep. So that is suspiciously reliable crowd control on your first monster. At max skill level, the cooldown will go down to 18 seconds and cost three mana to use. The sleep itself will double to 14 seconds, but the five hits clause still stays the same. She is a support monster, and speaking of which, we should cover these new monster types for a moment. These new designations cover the monster's default AI and their behavior in-game. And as a support, that means that she's more suited for doing that than doing damage. But you probably could have ascertained that from her skill descriptions. She will also move towards an ally when she's attacked or getting low on HP. The Water Gore is your second unit, and he's from an entirely new monster family. He's a stripper, meaning he removes buffs from the opponent, but a very picky one. His second skill, Shoulder Strike, removes invincibility from the target. Then he'll get a defense buff, but if he actually removes invincibility from something, he'll get even more defense. This sounds limited in concept, but there's a surprising amount of invincibility in the early game bosses. So he's definitely a huge help early on. And at max skill level, the cooldown will go down to 24 seconds from 30 and cost four mana to use. He's also got an extremely synergistic third skill, which I love to see. It's an AOE that scales with his defense, which as you know, gets boosted from his skill too. At max skill level, the shield will last for 14 seconds up from seven and the cooldown will go from 24 seconds to 18. It'll also cost three mana to use. As for his type, he He's what's called a knight in Summoner's War Chronicles. He'll fight at the front line since he's got survivability through his higher defense. His main focus is to attack the closest enemy and protect his allies. Next is the Water Elemental. Yep, water again. Your whole team is really, really wet. This guy you'll get through pieces early on, right after you unlock the summon altar so you can summon anywhere. His second skill deals damage based on the target's max HP and deals bonus damage if it shares an attribute, which in this case is water. Starting cooldown for that is 18 seconds and it costs just a measly two mana. His third skill is very straightforward. It's a shield that gets applied to him that lasts for seven seconds and it's worth a quarter of his max HP. And this skill is perfect because he's an assassin. So he's trying to do bursty single target damage and he'll actively go for the longer ranged enemies if they're present. This skill's on a 24 second cooldown and costs three mana. Your starting team is notable composed of all water units, so there's a lot of room to add some elemental diversity later on. What's important to remember about Summoner's War Chronicles 2 is that your character will also have an elemental leaning depending on what weapon they're using. But back to the monsters, the ones you do have are really focused on opening up the enemies for attacks through strip and sleep and protecting themselves so that you can stay in the fight for longer. As for which monsters are best to swap out first or which monsters to aim for, well, that's a different video. You're just gonna have to subscribe and wait for that one to come out. And the final thing that I'm going to be covering today, it's the Pathfinder Bear. Look at him, he's so cute. Look at his little hat, dude. He's not a monster, but he's your first mount and I feel like that deserves some celebrating.